City Schools College Credit Plus Information Night for academic year 2022-2023. My name is Tina Medina and I'm one of the high school counselors and part-time advisor at Tri-C as well. Behind the scenes, I couldn't have done it without these students uh, assisting me with technology tonight are Nicole Wong, Elaine Shaft, Malachi Crespo, and Joel Petrie. So, really appreciate their assistance. Over the next hour, uh, we'll be sharing information about the College Credit Plus program here in the state of Ohio, as well as answering any of your questions uh, that you may have. I'm honored to be joined by uh, representatives from a couple of our local colleges, uh, partner, partner camp campuses from Cuyahoga Community College, AKA Tri-C. Um, we have Mrs. Renee Lamp. And from Lorraine County Community College, also known as LCCC. -C -C. <laughs> we have Nadia Leary and Rebecca, Rebecca Papa Constantino, who is one of our English teachers here um, on campus. However, she will be providing a recorded presentation for us today. Also in the audience, we have Lori Getz from Berea Mid Park Middle School. She'll be here to answer any questions um, that you may have for seventh, eighth, right? Seventh, eighth graders and rising ninth graders. So she'll be here. Thank you. What is College Credit Plus? All right, this is uh, basically a Ohio dual credit program, and that simply means that the high school students can earn college credit at the same time as they earn uh, high school credit. Um, it's super important that students who enroll in the courses must adhere to the policies and procedures. Here, eligibility requirements are for grades 7 through 12. Uh, we will ask that these students complete an assessment exam and be determined eligible based on the exam scores from the College Credit Plus program. Students um, can apply to as many colleges as they would like. I have uh, worked with students that were interested in Cleveland State only. Uh, also Tri-C or Lorraine Community College and some other private colleges as well. So please know that you can apply to, a multiple, to multiple colleges, but you must be an Ohio resident. All right, students can also earn up to 30, I just wanna head back here. Uh, students can, in this program, earn up to 30 credit hours each academic year. And we do not want students to go past the 120 credit hours of the course, over the course of the program. So that's from seventh grade all the way up to their senior year. They are allotted um, a total of 120 credits. And many students who take advantage of the program are you know, able to complete at least, at minimum, um, a year of you know, your elective colleges your first year. So I've seen a lot of uh, motivated students who are interested in, you know, committed, committed and interested in completing coursework through CCP. All right, so again, may choose from a variety of college uh, level courses, and we talked about earning credit to satisfy both high school and college requirements. To be eligible, um, so you, you can choose from a variety of colleges, level courses. Just keep in mind that the courses are determined by your placement testing scores, which our two representatives will discuss um, at length um, what those requirements look like, look like for their individual uh, uh, college. Remember that the great thing is that you can continue to earn those college and high school credits, which I said before. Um, also important to know that you may have students that successful, successfully complete four years of English, English um, prior 
to even ending their senior year. So I have many students that have started English 1010, 1020 in the first school year, so that's uh, fall semester, and then spring semester, they, they complete the 1010 and 1020. So that is year one of high school, year two of high school, and they're just in ninth grade. So then the following year, they can complete a humanities class, uh, which is another uh, full high school credit, and then decide on maybe a higher level English uh, to complete their, you know, wrap around their whole four, four years of high school. Many students in my alpha, at least, have really connected to the 161-162 here at the high school, or they do the 1010-1020 um, through Tri-C, and they're comfortable with those two credits and don't really wish to you know, uh, exceed those, but then they end the other years of English uh, here at the high school. Just a pattern that I've been seeing. Failing or withdrawing from a CCP course, um, you'll need to successfully complete the course in order to earn the dual credit. Um, if you fail the course or withdraw from that course, remember that that information will end up on the student's high school uh, transcript as well as the student's college transcript. Uh, students have 14 days from the first day of the college course to withdraw without any penalty. But they have to ask, they have to come and report that information to the high school counselor, complete a form, and then we forward that on uh, to the appropriate contact at the other college. Uh, if you miss that by one day, um, the district will be charging the family of the end of that course. Um, let me see if I covered everything there. So that, yeah, that's really important, and we've had students who just don't communicate that, either with their family and or us, and uh, just kind of get into a bind. So please make sure that constant communication is happening. A positive note, um, students that success, successfully complete the college course don't have to pay for books or fees, and students attending college may have the cost as well uh, included for books and fees. Here in, in the high school level, we have many students who have been taking uh, CCP classes so those books pretty much are located in our library and they are, students are required to connect with the librarian to make sure that the uh, book, uh, books are available. And if not, then they can work with their counselor to manage how to you know, gain the books from the college. So students grade 10 through 12 may take classes starting summer fall and spring semesters. With a show of hands, how many families are interested in starting summer? Okay, how many families are interested in just like an elective class like, I just want to get help out of the way, something like that. Okay, so those are conversations that you can have with your counselor to determine what that best first class could be for you in the summer. So we're here and available to talk about that. May take courses at the high school. Again, we have Mrs. Papa here, um, who is one of, one of two uh, teachers that instruct classes here through Lorraine. And the other options are taking it at the college campus and getting that experience. For the most part, in the fall, I believe, those uh, open seats on campus are going to be as they were prior to the pandemic. Uh, also, online course availability still exists. And uh, again, we have the partnership with uh, LCCC that allow our students to take the classes here. So I'm going to play a video that Mrs. Papa previously recorded just to talk about what uh, that 160 English 161 course and 162 course entail. And enjoy. It shouldn't be that long. Hello, my name 
is Ms. Pat Pasatino, and I teach the English 161 and 162 and Intro to Humanities CCP classes through LCCC at Berea McCarthy High School. I thought I would put together some helpful tips and um, some good information for you as you decide whether CCP is right for your child. The most important thing to remember is that CCP courses here are not college prep classes, they are actual college classes that happen to meet at the MHS. So we're really just the location of the college courses. And sometimes I think it's confusing for students and for parents because your teachers of those classes are also teaching high school classes. The syllabus for the course is the contract for the course. So whatever requirements and expectations the instructor lays out, um, those are the contractual requirements and expectations. The high school administration does not and cannot mediate. Every instructor is an adjunct faculty member at Tri-C or LCCC or whichever institution we are working with, and I think all of our classes here at the high school are through Marin County Community College. Every faculty member has their own requirements and expectations as they uh, fall into the requirements and expectations at the college level. So what this means is the instructors here at the high school may have some policies regarding attendance, makeup work, late work, um, absences, tardies, or whatever it is that might be different than the district's policies. And the Berea Board of Education actually supports these policies. If you have been to college, you know that college courses are very different than high school courses. Students have to be more disciplined more and work independently. So, one of the main differences is that it requires a lot of time outside of class for study or work. Um, typically, colleges state that for every hour that you're in class, you should expect to work for two hours out of class. Now, that doesn't always fall evenly. So, there might be a day in, let's say, my English class where you really don't have anything to do that evening, but then you might work two or three hours um, over the weekend on an essay. The reading material is expected to be done on our own for the most part, so I think at high school level we tend to read a lot of that information together or go over it together at the college level. You don't always do that. One of the biggest differences is that students' grades are based on just a few major grades, not on many more assignments. So, um, Students do not have as many opportunities to raise a grade, or, um, or you know, there's no fluff in the grade. And of course, instructors don't always remind students of due dates on exams. So typically, they'll receive a schedule for the semester. I know in my class is kind of hard to do a whole semester with things changing as often as they do. So I tend to give a unit uh, plan, which is anywhere from two to four weeks. So, and then I don't remind them of due dates or test dates. Another big difference is that the instructors don't make all the connections for the students. So they might not tell them exactly what is on test. The students have to make their own connections between the reading material, um, class discussions, and what they're expected to know for an exam. And, um, and of course, instructors and professors may not accept late work at all, even if absences are excused. So that differs from instructor to instructor. 
Students might be expected to work on group assignments outside of class. Typically, instructors don't offer extensions on due dates. Participation also affects grades. And at LCCC, they don't really distinguish between excused and unexcused absences. So depending on what the department policy is, they may only um, allow three total before lowering the rate. Uh, the Arts and Humanities Department, uh, I believe, allows for five before failure. So that's, that's a big difference. The most notable difference, I think, is what is on red on the screen here, and that's that you're not evaluated on effort, you're evaluated on skill. That doesn't mean that a lot of effort won't result in a good grade, but it doesn't always result in a good grade. So it really is about where the students are skill level wise, especially in a class like English 161, which is really based on four or five essays written in a semester. So some of the traits that I have found are um, present in students who are ready and who are successful in CCP courses are as follows. The student is self-motivated, the student is disciplined, Often, these are the kinds of students who are involved in a lot of different things or are taking AP classes at the same time, so it's really important that they can uh, remain disciplined and um, manage their time well. The successful student is organized, is willing to advocate for him or herself, so they typically are the type of student that can ask for help or ask questions when they need it. They can accept constructive criticism and they can accept failure and learn from it. So, you know, if they don't receive the grade they want the first time around, they can reflect on their performance and learn from it. Your child is probably not ready if you have to check their assignments or their planners or their schedules daily. They're probably not ready if you need to help them with their homework. These are college courses, so um, aside from maybe some editing or proofreading, um, you probably shouldn't be helping them at all. Um, your child is not ready if they give up after not receiving the grades they're accustomed to. They're not ready if they are not willing to sacrifice time to put in the extra time that college classes require. And um, I cannot stress this enough, they're not ready if they can't handle mature subject matter. So um, a lot of times the content, especially in an arts or humanities or English class, is designed for the mature student. So um, those things aren't um, tailored for a high school student necessarily. So I teach the English classes here at the MHS, so I can talk mostly about the English courses. So from what I've seen in my experience, uh, I think this will be helpful if you're trying to decide if your child should take maybe an AP course rather than a CCP course. Um, I can tell you what I have found to, to be the most successful pathway. And the most successful students in this class have taken the AP language and composition course in 11th grade. Now, it's not necessary, but that tends to be students who, those are the students who find the course, um, you know, not as challenging as maybe a ninth or 10th grader would. Students who have taken honors classes and excelled in them are typically the ones who do the best in English 161 and 162 at the high school level. It is important though to know that if your child is skipping 9th or 10th or 11th grade English, 
that they may have some gaps and that's not the school's fault. It's just when you're skipping a grade of English and that course was designed to prep you for college, you may lack some of the things that are considered general knowledge in, by the time you get to college. So things like MLA format, parenthetical citations, or when they skip 11th grade English, they're skipping American literature and some of the classic works that make a well-rounded person or rhetorical strategies or some research strategies that really don't come into play until older grade levels. And they may not have done as much formal structured writing as the instructor expects them to have background in. So those are just little things to think about. That's not to say that a ninth or 10th or 11th grader can't be successful in English CCP classes. It just means that they probably will have to put in more time than a typical um, English 161 or 162 student. And of course, I know that all the instructors are willing to help those students, but um, you, know, you do have to think about some of the gaps that may be there because of skipping grade levels. And that's actually to my detriment to tell you that because I would love to fill my courses um, with as many students as I can. And another huge thing that I know uh, the other speakers tonight have talked about is that because of FERPA laws, we cannot communicate with parents about students' behavior or grades. So, um, you know, students can sign a waiver form, but they are allowed to choose not to, and most of my students choose not to. So, parents cannot contact the instructors on behalf of the students' concerns or questions or to ask about their grades. This wouldn't happen off campus at the college level, and it doesn't happen here either. So that's a federal law that is um, very important to understand. So students really work independently, and they have to handle their own affairs. There are resources available for students who are struggling. LCCC offers tutoring and a writing center. Um, you can get information about that on their website. They do have an office of services for students with disabilities. Um, teachers all have office hours, so you know they, the students are aware when those are, and they're always welcome to see their instructors for help. And of course, they have each other, and that's also a really good resource. If you have questions about English CCP courses in particular, you can email me at rpapa at burlingschools.org. I will be happy to help you with any questions you have. Thank you for your time. Great information from Mrs. Papa. Next steps, um, applying and getting in, admitted. I'd like to bounce off of this screen real quick and just give you um, a quick overview of where you guys will need to, to go for steps to uh, apply to the program. So you'll go to the main page, uh, Berea City School District website. Um, click on schools, and if you're a high school student, you um, or family, you can click on the Berea Mid Park High School, and Mrs. Getz also has will have the same information on the Middleburg. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I like to call it Middleburg, <laughs> but Berea Mid Park Middle School um, website as well. But for this purpose tonight, I'll click here and we'll have you go to the school counseling website and the college now link to the left i'm sorry the college credit plus and here is the college credit plus ccp process we'll click on that in a minute below this is going to be the first step where it says 22-23 ccp intent to participate um, this will be opened uh, starting tomorrow. 
and the intent to participate deadline is going to be April 1st. You'll hear us repeat that throughout this entire evening. Um, again, it's not, this link is not open until tomorrow. Um, this CCP process link will give you all of the information you need. There is tons of information here. Where to begin, um, here is, if you're attending a CCP, you know, attend a CCP meeting, um, which would be your first step that you did today, and then again, the intent to participate. Uh, follow the steps if you will be taking a CCP class on campus. So I have the intent to participate. Uh, again, if you are a student who has done an application and are currently in the CCP world and have taken two or three classes already, no need for you to do another application. Um, just for the students that are starting fresh, you will be required and you're interested in taking a class at the high school. Uh, this is the application link. And then this is the transcript request form. Uh, we talk uh, a great deal about submitting the request because we have to upload and send to the school your transcript so that we can verify that there's a 3.0 uh, GPA on your transcript. Again, um, so this information is here. And I wanted to just make a point quickly that this looks different from last year, if anybody's like familiar with this transcript form. I have a point where I ask if you've taken the assessments. If you have not taken the assessments, we're going, you're going to have to pause and you won't be able to move forward in that process. You will need to, the student will need to uh, go onto the website get the information, you know, take the assessments, show us your score, and upload the scores. So I just didn't want anyone to feel like they're doing the application process incorrectly. Um, there is an actual halt if you do not have your scores, and it just makes it easier for the middle school and the high school to, com to communicate those scores. If you need any assistance with that, please contact your school counselor um, at the grade level. Uh, also, again, rising 10th and 11th graders must complete the college essay requirement. And is that still the same, Mrs. Neary? I believe that it, believe that is. Follow the link for instructions, and we have it all listed here um, on the Loring website. Again, if you're planning to do Tri-C, same intent to participate, different application, and same CCP transcript request form. On the transcript request form, we're also going to ask you what courses are you guys interested in taking? And we'll list them. English 161, I mean, you'll be able to choose and select from those. Um, and then what I have been doing with the students here in the building, so the ninth graders all the way up to the 11th graders, we've been working with them um, pretty much over the last month or so, working on their schedules for next year. A lot of students have come into my office and the other counselor's offices stating, um, I don't want to take any of the high school English, I'm planning on CCP. So what we've been telling the students is, please add on your course request the, the high school classes. And once you are admitted and have shown your scores, then we're, we'll, we're able to pull that off of their course request and add them into the appropriate CCP course. So it's a little bit of a process. So bear with us. I think that we've kind of um, cut out a lot of, um, you know, a lot of issues that we've been experiencing over the past couple of years, um, especially over COVID where we just didn't have uh, control over where the scores were coming from. So follow the steps if you will be taking again at the Tri-C and here uh, on the letter D, students in grades 10 through 12 with a CUME 3.0 or higher do not need to take an English placement at Tri-C. Again, I'm going to have um, Tri-C talk a little bit more about that and give some more details. All right, so all the information is here as you can tell. Um, 
and then lower uh, in this area. I had the links above for the actual applications, but you could also find the links for Cleveland State University and again, Loring Community College and Tri-C. I hope that helps. So complete the CCP request. So we went through all of those details. I really want to stress here that completing the form does not guarantee all students will earn a seat at the high school. We do offer a wait list and or suggest the college's online or in-class options. So obviously we are going to give precedent to our uh, higher ranking students. When I say higher ranking, I mean seniors, juniors, sophomores um, will be placed in those courses uh, first and then again depending on how many courses uh, will that will be offered here in the building as of this year um, or last this current school year we've had two course sections so we were able to fill those up and had to uh, actually move some of the students the rising ninth graders to an online course or in building at Tri-C or Loring Community College as well, online or in person. All right, and let me just click on slideshow, forgive me. So many pathways and many careers. I speak to many students who, you know, are in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, even our seniors that have having a clue on what their career choice may be in college, and that is okay. Even at the college level, um, I have students come to me and they still are undecided. So we work through that a little bit, and um, this career pathway link is amazing for students to kind of help them identify if they're interested in medical, business, or you know any other type of <coughs> pathway. So I just wanna click on here briefly, um, Ohio Department of Education takes you through the areas um, that students may be interested in. Um, here's some agricultural and environmental systems, art and communications, business information, education. I really wanna focus on nursing. So I'm gonna pull this up real quick. So here's a health science career pathway, and it, it's something that I like to review with students that may be interested in this um, process. Here you can kind of plan out, you have seventh, eighth grade, all the way to your senior year, what courses and examples of courses that they can complete in order to be you know, set and ready to move forward once uh, they leave the high school and start their first year of college. So we have students can start as early as 7th, 8th grade, English, then moving into English 2, their uh, freshman, sophomore year, and I hope that's, that's a little tiny, but uh, you should be able to click on the link from home and really talk through that process. So some of the high school courses are here, U.S. government, you know, let's get chemist chemistry out of the way, biology, world history, um, some fine arts, uh, et cetera. So that is just a, an example of a pathway for your nursing program. So under what scenarios can a qualified student use uh, College Credit Plus? So we always just like to, you know, identify those different areas so you have your typical student um, who has taken all courses that they need in order to complete the graduation requirements here and then they're ready to begin college coursework so that looks like most likely likely a junior or a se senior and then students who want to experience what college level work really is like and if they have a really strong ethic that could be an individual who's interested in this program. Benefits from College Credit Plus has not satisfied um, his or her graduation requirements and you know need that unit of English or a history. Sometimes I have uh, Polaris students 
for even students who are heavy into the arts and orchestra and band and have a full schedule all the way from ninth to 12th grade and they cannot get some of those you know prereq requirements in um, they are good candidates to get some of those courses done like over the summer and the student again who wants to take the college course at the same time and meets a high school requirement underperforming and in ineligible students again this is defined as a student who meets at least one of the following conditions has a cum gpa lower than 2.0 in the college courses um, withdraws from or receives no credit from two or more courses in the same term so again for high school a d is passing for us not for college so if you have a student who gets a d again passing for us but if they're going to move on to that transcript's going to follow them to college, they're most likely going to need to repeat that course at the college level. Any ineligible student is defined as a student who meets the de definition of underperforming student. So at any time, you know, again, the two consecutive terms of enrollment, if we see that we have um, underperforming students, we will pull them into our office, have that conversation, um, and, you know, make decisions from there. All CCC CCP courses count for the, uh, the same as an AP class. So um, we've got the 5.0 with the equaling the A, B, 4.0, C, 3.0, and the 1.0 for the, for the D. So transfer information. Both Lorraine and Tri-C offer transfer counseling and have transfer guides to help you choose courses. I, um, as well, am able to help students with um, the knowledge on, you know, again, also Dr. Rubensall, who is our college readiness counselor, is able to help students, you know, confirm if the classes that they will be signing up for at the college level will transfer to a four-year university. We have students who automatically know that they're going to be going to CSU and they're interested in the engineering program. So we'll just pull up a transfer guide from um, from that school, from Cleveland State. We'll also guide them and the families to this transferology.com website and basically inserting the courses, uh, uh, say at Tri-C, and then connecting them with CSU will give them a real clear answer. I also um, really advise families not to just count on the transferology.com website that I advise them, if you know your student is gonna to go to CSU, please meet with an advisor at that school and confirm and verify. Each and every year, colleges are changing their requirements and it's just super important to have that connection, especially if you have a well laid out plan for your child. Um, I would say really make sure you meet with an advisor at that level. So near the end of the senior year, the student will request an official transcript to be sent to their new college. And we remind them of that as well every year. So steps to becoming a College Credit Plus student, again, um, guiding the process, talk with your school counselor, I can't stress that enough. Again, the intent to participate, again, April 1st. And please print a copy of your email verification that you'll receive once you submit that because if there's any gremlins in the system and somehow it didn't go through into, uh, to our Google document, you'll have proof to show us that you completed that. And for more information and super detailed information, you can refer to ohiohighered.org website uh, for further information and background for College Credit Plus. Again, college readiness is determined by each college. And I'd like to introduce Renee Yeah, come and share her information for Tri-C.
been a while. Okay, we're there. So I'm Renee Lamp. I am a coordinator for the CCP program at the Western Campus just on the street in Parma. Um, we have coordinators for each one of our locations, so we're certainly ready to help you um, as you apply. The students who attend Tri-C are able to access any of our locations, so the Brunswick University Center, you can see at the top of our list, the Eastern Campus, Metro Downtown, West, of course, is just on the street in Parma, and then we have the West Shore, Cam West Shore Campus in Westlake, Ohio. Um, you may not think that you would want to take a class at any of the other locations, but many of our students, especially right now, are taking our online classes. If we have a class that is an online-only class, you can take it out of any of our other locations. It doesn't have to be Brunswick or West. So why would you choose uh, CCP at Tri-C? And any of the colleges have very good CCP programs. Uh, but if you wanted to look at Tri-C, again, we have convenient locations due to all of our different campuses that we have. We have various teaching formats, in-person, hybrid, online, um, and then we also have partnerships with other high schools, not Berea, but we have other uh, partnerships with different schools. So you can do any of the class formats that you would like. We have multiple class time options, mornings, afternoons, evenings. We have CCP students who do weekend classes. Um, so because that's just how it would fit into their schedule, especially with extracurriculars. So right now I have a student who takes a chem class on Saturday mornings, chem lecture and lab. Um, student services that we offer are very similar to any other institution. Uh, we offer the counseling, which is we have academic counseling and mental health counseling at tri -Seed. We have free tutoring services to all of our students. We do have a career center, and some of our CCP students like to go to the career center so they can talk about different internships that they might be thinking about between their junior and senior year, their senior year into uh, college. Um, we have a transfer center, just as Ms. Medina had mentioned, and they are there to help our students who might be looking to continue a Tri-C and earn a degree and then transfer on to a four-year institution or if they just want to do CCP at Tri-C and then once they graduate high school they want to take those credits and transfer on. Our transfer center is available for our CCP students so that they can understand how that transfer process will work. We do offer an RTAU pass to all of our students and it is free to our CCP students as well. Um, another good reason to choose Tri-C is you can earn an Associates of Arts degree, you can earn a multitude of certificates, um, and then we also have an Associate of Arts, or excuse me, Associate of Science that you could receive while you're earning your high school diploma. And then you would work with many experienced coordinators for the CCP program, but also our experienced academic counselors at Tri-C. Student accessibility services in our disability services department is very good at offering our students who need accommodations. Um, they do require an appointment. If you have something like an IEP or a 504 plan that would require some accommodations to help your student, you would want to make sure that you schedule an appointment with this office and they would assist you in getting those documents on file with us so that we can offer any services that you might need or that the student needs. Um, FERPA was already mentioned by Mrs. Papa. <laughs> Is that her name? Okay. Um, so it is really important. We do encourage that a student, if you want a third party or your parent or guardian to assist you with the CCP process, you need to make sure that that person is on your FERPA form. So please make sure that you don't disregard it. It is important that we have that information and it's most certainly important if someone like your parent, guardian, or third party wants to contact a dean or an instructor or one of your professors. Mature content was also mentioned. Um, our faculty or adjunct faculty at Tri-C is not made aware that they have a student in their class that is CCP. So they don't know your age, they don't know that you might be as young as a seventh grader. So they're not going to change their curriculum because you are in their class. 
Um, so you need to make sure that you are aware that there could be some explicit violent um, or sexual in nature content in some of the courses that could be you know, controversial or make you feel uncomfortable and you would have to make sure that you are okay you know, to, to be in a class that's going to discuss or show images, videos, etc. Of, of content like that. Um, it's not going to be in many of the classes, but it is in some of them. And we, as in someone within higher education and the Ohio Department of Education, um, has expressed concerns on how mature content can affect a student who was unexpected they un were unexpected, the content was unexpected in the class. So please make sure that you're aware of how that could affect you if you're gonna take a class such as photography or art or a class that within the syllabus kind of says it's going to have mature content. So getting started at Tri-C, our preferred Tri-C deadline, the Tri-C deadline is April 15th. The intent to participate deadline that Ms. Medina had mentioned several times is April 1st. That's a hard deadline. It's required by the Ohio Department of Education. So th there's no flexibility with that. You have to abide by their deadline of April 1st. So make sure you do your intent form starting tomorrow. Um, and then for Tri-C, our preferred deadline is April 15th because uh, you students will have a summer break. And before you go out on summer break, it's ideal for you to have all of your ducks in a row, so to speak. So you're going to want to make sure that you've applied, requested your transcript, um, and done all of the steps to make sure that the process is set up and ready to go for you, especially if you want to start in the summer. Um, so you're going to, you're going to do the tri CCP application, you're going to do your mature content permission slip, um, and then we need to see your transcript. We're going to review your GPA, your unweighted cumulative GPA when we receive your transcript. If you have any qualifying ACT or SAT scores, we'd also like to see those. And depending on your GPA and your grade level, you may have to take a Tri-C placement test. So for students who are, and this is just how it is at Tri-C, it's going to be a little different for LC. Um, if you are an incoming 10th grader, 10, 11, right? Incoming 10th or 11th grader, you just need to have a 3.0 unweighted cumulative GPA. We do not require an incoming 10th grader to take the English placement test if they have the 3.0. Okay, so if you're going to start in the summer semester or the fall semester, and that's when you are deemed a 10th grader, then you can certainly send your transcript to us right now that will show your ninth grade grades, the, the classes that you're taking in your current grades as of midterm, and we will use that to place you in English 1010. Um, but it is a little bit different if you go to LC, LCCC, excuse me, and so make sure that you pay attention to the differences there. The registration process, so what, how it goes for Tri-C, um, you're gonna receive your decision letter via email. Please make sure that you check your email. Once you've applied to Tri-C, you're gonna get a Tri-C email address. We're expecting you to check the email. <laughs> So please do make sure if you need to forward it onto your personal email because that's the best way for you to check email then make sure that you take those steps to do that because we do ask that you read the emails that we send you. There will be a mature contact questionnaire. You'll receive an email reminding you to get that done. Um, and then you're going to meet with your high school counselor to discuss the courses that you plan to take just as uh, Ms. Medina had mentioned prior. We have what's called the authorization to attend form, and that is a Tri-C specific form. That is going to tell us how many credits you're allowed to take as a CCP student at Tri-C, and the, t uh, the recommended classes that you would like. So if you're interested in taking English 1010 and English 1020, then those are the types of classes that you that would be listed on that form, so that when you meet with a Tri-C academic counselor, they know what your intentions are. It just saves us time as the coordinators and our academic counselors time to help you understand what pathway you might want to take. Um, after you've met with one of our counselors or discussed some classes, if you're a returning student with a coordinator, then you can register for the courses and you would want to attend a College Credit Plus orientation. 
These are the contacts for each of our locations. Um, CCP West Brunswick at tri c.edu in the top right is how you would reach me. So if you have any questions, I'm again Renee Lamp. Please make sure that you reach out and um, we monitor that email daily, myself and my colleague Melinda Gala. And we'd be happy to answer some more questions and go over any of the eligibility requirements that we might have if you're interested in tri -City. Thank you, Renee. And now from Lorraine Community College, Nadia Leary. So good evening, everyone. My name is Nadia Leary. I'm the manager of recruitment, my university, and College Credit Plus at Lorraine County Community College. Um, I'm also the parent of two Berea City Schools children, so I see some familiar faces out in the audience. Um, and, and I know there's an orchestra concert tonight over at the middle school, so uh, we'll, we'll get this information for you. But I'm very pleased to be here and to see you all in person. To give you some information about who participates in College Credit Plus at Lorraine County Community College, uh, in 2021, we had over 3,500 students that were CCP students taking over 10,000 classes. Of those 3,500 students in those 10,000 classes, 91% earned a C or better. So while that is wonderful, it's far outpacing, outperforming our traditional students at LCCC. Um, you will notice that it's not 100%. So as Ms. Medina mentioned, you know, the, some students will withdraw from classes or could fail or get a D. It's not 100%, but overall, um, students are doing very, very well in their College Credit Plus classes at Lorain County Community College. Um, the value, the tuition of the books um, that students saved with those 10,000 courses was over $5 million. At Berea Mid Park High School, um, we have had over 100 students participate on a yearly basis, taking courses that are English 161 and 162, our Intro to Humanities course, and also Anatomy and Physiology. So we have a, a very good sizable population of students taking courses here too at the high school. Ms. Medina mentioned the pathways options and um, referenced the Ohio Department of Education's website about some different career pathways. LCCC has also developed pathways for students to kind of figure out what kind of classes they can take and to show what you could enroll in as a CCP student. So we partner uh, through our university partnership with um, over 10 different Ohio colleges and universities where those schools offer bachelor's degrees on our campus. So we have developed pathways that show how students would start in their ninth grade year, uh, take CCP courses, graduate with their associate degree by their senior year, and then in just two additional years, go through one of our university partnership programs to earn their bachelor's degree. So these pathways are all on our website, um, lorrainecc.edu slash myuniversity. They're very prescriptive, um, they're very strict. You, if someone wants to do these in their entirety, they do have to follow them step by step. But what I find them very useful for is to show students what courses might go towards a specific major. So if you're interested in biology, for instance, we have a biology pathway with the uh, Bowling Green State University. You could pull up the My University pathway for biology and say, oh, look, there's this class I could take. I could take that my sophomore year and I know that it would transfer into that school and go towards that specific program. So they're really great advising tools. They give students an idea of what types of courses they might want to take for some specific majors at some Ohio colleges. So for Lorraine County Community College, um, your next steps in terms of um, action tonight for College Credit Plus. Um, the intent to participate is April 1st and, and that's standard across the board. Uh, I will say it, it is required, it is required for your student to submit that intent to participate, but it's not binding. So if you 
fill that out and then your student chooses later on not to participate, that's absolutely fine. You won't be penalized for, for filling out the intent to participate, but if you don't do it, then you're, you're limiting your chances and you may not be able to take any College Credit Plus courses for the entire following year. So even if you think you might do it, make sure that you fill out that intent to participate. We too um, have a suggested deadline of April 15th um, for application for our summer courses. Um, we start registering for our summer and fall courses in March. So even in the next couple of months, you could turn in your CCP application, get those transcripts in, um, be admitted, and then start registering for your summer and fall classes at Lorain County Community College. We will let you apply uh, to CCP throughout the summer, right up until courses start. Uh, the danger there is the courses that you want may not be available because people can start registering in March. So if you have that specific class you want, it might not be open by the time you submit that application if you wait until August. We also have a form that must be completed by your school counselor before you can register for classes at LCCC. So if you apply to us in July, you then still need to meet with your counselor to get that form filled out in order to register with us. Um, and I'm pretty sure Ms. Medina and Dr. Rubensaw are not going to be here every day in July um, to meet with you to get those completed. So the more that you can do before school lets out for summer, the better. You can have everything um, completed and ready and registered for fall semester uh, before you leave in June. So when you apply to LCCC, um, we have an online application. Um, we then ask that you submit your um, official transcript from your school and your, your school counselors will help you with that. Um, depending, again, on the courses that you wish to take and your GPA, you may have to take our placement test, which is the AccuPlacer, um, or if you have qualifying ACT or SAT scores, we would ask that you send those. For students that are interested in taking English, um, specifically the English 161 and 162 that are offered here at the high school, students that have completed two years of high school English and have a 3.0 cumulative high school GPA will automatically place into English without further testing. If you have a 3.0 GPA but you haven't yet completed two years of high school English, then we have you take our writing sample at Lorain County Community College. And that can be done remotely. Um, we have instructions on our website for that. If you have less than a 3.0 GPA and you would like to try and take English, um, you would have to submit those qualifying ACT, SAT scores or take our AccuPlacer test. Um, and the scores are listed up there. It's an 18 on the English ACT or a 480 on the um, evidence-based reading and writing for the SAT for our English. Um, and, and we'll follow up too and can answer those questions. Um, when you are a CCP student and you apply to a college, you are assigned an advisor at whatever college that you apply to. So not only do you have your high school counselor that you can still work with to answer questions, you'll also have someone at the college that help, will help you um, selecting the courses you're interested, telling you what you're eligible to take, um, and again, what might go to those degree programs that you're interested in. Once students are admitted to a CCP, um, similar to Tri-C, you'll have a, an account that you create, you get an LCCC email, if you need to log in, create that, make sure that you're checking it. Um, we do offer orientations for our CCP students as well. Um, and then, again, you'd meet with your school counselor to discuss those courses and have that course authorization filled out. If you are only planning to take courses that are offered here at the high school, you don't have to do those extra steps. You still have to apply, you still have to be admitted, but we work very closely. Um, I'm the advisor for Berea Mid Park High School, and so I'll work closely with the counselors. I get, we get those lists together, we make sure everyone's eligible, and then I register you on the back end over the summer. So you wouldn't have to come to campus um, to pick up books. The books are provided here at your, at your, in your class. Um, there, there's, some of those steps are taken away. Courses that are offered here follow your high school schedule, um, which is different if you take an online course or come to LCCC. Those classes would be following the schedule of LCCC, which is not going to be the same. Um, I can tell you, for instance, we had school today um, where I know you guys did not, um, although thank you all for coming out tonight, so glad to see you here. Um, 
But again, so those, those high school psych courses run just a little bit differently than the classes taken online, and you can do both. Um, you can choose to take a course here in the building and then pick up another class online should you want to do that. I'm the uh, advisor, again, for Berea Mid Park High School students, so if you did want to take a class at, online or at one of our campuses, um, you can schedule an appointment with me. We can do email appointments, face-to-face, um, -face, um, phone appointments. Uh, we do hold some advising sessions at high schools, um, or uh, you can always come out to campus as well. If you're taking a class online or at our campuses, we do have you order our books online and then you would have to go out to our campuses to pick those up. We have all of this information on our website as well, lorraineccc.edu slash ccp. We got a Facebook page if you want to check out some of our posts there and just more information. Um, our online link to our, our application is listed there and as well as my information. If you do have further questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, and I don't know if we have anybody else coming up, but thank you very much. Thank you, that was great information. Um, so we're here at the end of our presentation and Q&A, so I'd like to take some questions from the audience if you have any directed uh, towards Tri-C tri and or Lorraine. Okay. Go ahead. Are you speaking of the class here in the building? So the students in a 161 English course are just students that have registered for that high, uh, college course. So they can take 161 in the fall and then 162 in the spring. They can also, uh, they can't take the humanities unless they're done with 161. And then the other option is the A&P that they can take uh, alongside English 161. So for our courses that we're offering here, if they want to do the science A&P and English 161 first semester of fall of, of next year, school year, then they could do that if they again pass and have all their assessments done. You're welcome. No math courses at this time at the high school that we know of yet. But students can have the option on that application to say that they're interested in that. Again, it's about getting um, a certified student here in the building, not student, forgive me, teacher, uh, who would be eligible uh, to, you know, proctor and provide that class. Yes. online or at the college's campus? Good question. And one more question. Yeah. If the student is wanting to go to college out of state, do they have to take the online course or is it a conversation? Good question. It's a conversation. So it's a conversation with the out of state college. I personally have a, a child who completed college out of state um, and did probably two years of college credit plus and all of the credits transferred but that does that is not promised if you're doing out of state again that was just that particular college that she attended so she was able to complete her college in three years because she was able to get all of the you know, first year college prereqs out of the way yes S-A-T or A-C-T. Good question. Any others? Yes. Mm, public ones. So BW is kind of um, 
you know, they have their requirements, and by the time you're done reading their requirements, you're not going to apply because they're very particular on providing those seats to their current students that um, are not CCP students. Yeah, and your your yes, and your high school counselor can help with that as well. You could also apply if, you, if your student knows they want to go to Case Western and you know that they're private institution. Um, you could apply in the CCP student case. The standards are the same as any other case student, but you could certainly pursue the CCP program through that institution that could be private. Institution. Yes. Any state school, any public. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes. Do you go tri state and LCC? Absolutely. I don't see how, yeah, you could manage that, if, especially if they're both done online. Um, what's tricky there is, you know, when you go, when your student goes to a four year college, you're just going to have to have transcripts from both. Both locations sent. Correct. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. Um, you had spoken earlier about filling out the intent form, and then you said something about you need to take a pause and there's an assessment. So the intent to participate is uh, the very first step you'll need to do. And again, as Mrs. Leary mentioned, if you're interested, even one little iota, that's one form that you really want to complete. But the other part was if you do the transcript request form, and I will, uh, there's a pause there if you do, have not completed the assessments. So again, if you're interested in going to try C, have done the online assessments and receive a score for English 1010 and 1020. How do they typically get those scores online once they completed? Try C um, English assessment. Okay, so the students will have the results emailed to them. And those are the results that will need to be uploaded on that transcript request when you get to that certain question. Is that clear? Okay. Any other questions in the back? Yes. Where would a middle schooler take a college course? At the middle school? No. Um, so middle schooler has the option of only Tri-C or Lorraine Community College online or in those buildings. No classes are offered at the middle school. Is that correct? Mrs. Skets. Any other questions? Yes. A hundred percent. Sports here at the school? No. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. Uh, okay, so based on, we're going to look at their GPA, so first and foremost, if it's that 3.0, then they don't have to do the testing, but if they are below the 2.0, and you'll see the steps in, outlined on our website, then that's when they have to take an active placer. If they're a rising ninth grader and do not have two years under their belt for Lorraine City School, Lorraine Community College, then they will be required to take those assessments. Okay, so it changed. So she had to take it in eighth grade. She had to take the occupation? Yeah, they, they offered it here in eighth right. grade. Correct. So the state, the state changed their eligibility standards okay. in the past few years, so we were, with the pandemic, able to use the 3.0 GPA. Mm -hmm. and, okay. But previously, we could only use test scores for admission. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I try to forget about the pandemic. So, <laughs> thank you for the clarification. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, it's a conversation, again, with the family, the student, and the school counselor. Many conversations that we've had, you know, privately in the office about, you know, what would be a better option for the student. And again, I think I pointed out four different reasons why a student, you know, would go towards this particular program. Um, and if any of those feel right um, to, to a family member, then, you know, they, t they take the opportunity to try out a class or two. All great questions tonight. If there aren't any other questions, um, again, thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, feel free to come on up if you have any questions in private, and uh, we'll be happy to answer those. Thank you.